Hey guys, it's Sam. Yeah, I'm dressed the same. I have the same hair and makeup as I did in my last video, but I figured I would pre-film since it's a little difficult for me right now to find time to film what with having a full-time job and life. So I'm gonna look the same as I did in the last video. Hope you're all okay with that. If you wanted to see a little behind the scenes of this makeup look and what products I used, I did post a reel over on my Instagram, so you can go and check that out. If you have any questions, let me know what you guys wanna know. And yeah, today's video is going to be a little what I brought to the hospital <laughs> video, um, like a hospital bag tour type of thing. Just a small disclaimer. If you are someone like me, who loves packing and getting ready for things and getting your bag ready for a vacation, you're going to overpack. You need so much less stuff than you think that you are going to need. I way overpacked and it didn't end up mattering really, but it was just annoying. I didn't need to lug a huge bag into the hospital, didn't need to have somebody lug the bag out for me. I wish that I had have known to pack a lot less than what I had packed. I'm going to go over the list of the things that I packed and the list of things that really were not necessary. So I'm going to start with the necessary things. First off, if you need a CPAP machine, you have to bring it with you. I brought my CPAP machine. I also brought distilled water with me for the CPAP machine, but I don't think that I needed to bring it with me because the hospital did supply that, which was really nice of them. <laughs> gotta love Canada. But yeah, so they supplied the distilled water for my CPAP machine, so that was all good. Obviously, underwear, a loose fitting t-shirt, pair of really loose pants. You don't want anything tight on your stomach, on your incision sites, anything like that. I didn't even end up wearing the pants that I brought because it was really uncomfortable. So I just wore like a nightgown kind of type of thing and that ended up being fine. Also would highly recommend bringing a house coat with you because that was really handy to have, especially when I got up walking after my surgery. They have you kind of do a couple laps and try to work out some of the bloating that you have, which is really, really bad at the beginning, but I promise it does get better. Slip on shoes are a really good idea, like slippers, anything that has like grippies on the bottom of them, they're a really good idea to have. You don't want to be bending over, tying anything up or struggling to get anything on. So if you have your surgery in the winter time, like I did, good luck to you. I literally walked to the hospital in a pair of fuzzy socks. Didn't care, didn't care at all. A tip is definitely bring a pillow for the ride home so that you can kind of hold it over your stomach and it kind of helps to keep everything in place and make you feel a little bit more comfortable. Seatbelt doesn't need to be pushing on anything. I brought protein shakes and Gatorade Zero to the hospital with me just in case. I didn't end up needing them at all because I didn't want to eat anything. The hospital did supply some of the foods that you can eat during your first stages. So I had a little bit of broccoli soup with protein powder in it. I had yogurt with protein powder in it oatmeal with protein powder in it. It was a fun couple of days in the hospital. <laughs> Bring a hairbrush. I mean, nothing will make you feel better after your surgery and after your first night in the hospital than getting up and actually getting your hair out of your face, getting comfortable again because it's not very comfortable. Uh, toothbrush is a good idea. Deodorant is a good idea. Uh, if your skin gets really dry, hand cream, face cream, lip balm, all essential things to have. And they're really small, so it doesn't matter if you bring them or not. A hair tie or hair clip, depending on whatever you want. Because once again, you do not want your hair in your face after surgery, especially because there is always a risk of throwing up. You might react badly to the painkillers that they give you. You might just react badly in general. This is abdominal surgery, people, listen up. I am a person who wears glasses. Can't even see you guys right now, but it's all good. So I would highly recommend bringing a glasses case with you because 
probably not gonna wear your glasses after surgery. They're gonna sit in your hospital bag before you go for your surgery, and they're gonna sit there until you go home because you don't really need to see anything. Any medication that you're on, you're gonna need to bring, vitamins that you're going to be taking after surgery, at least at my hospital where they did my surgery, they wanted to see the vitamins that I was going to be taking afterwards to approve them going forward. So I brought them with me. Fuzzy socks are a great idea. The socks that I ended up wearing out of the hospital were provided to me by the hospital. They had little grippies on the bottoms of them and it was really cute. A really sweet nurse put them on my feet for me and I was really, really thankful for her for doing that because I was immediately cold after surgery. I was actually cold before surgery because I had lost some weight and common side effect after surgery is feeling cold all the time. <laughs> you don't have as much insulation as you once did. A phone charger is a great thing to have, but I didn't end up using my phone at all. I, I don't know if it was just that I reacted really poorly to the pain meds or to the anesthetic, but I was really groggy. I don't even really remember the first week or so after surgery. It was a long time coming out of that state and I couldn't wait to get back to normal. Some of the things that I did pack that I didn't end up needing were a journal and pens. I thought that I was gonna have a lot more energy after surgery and a lot more time to kill. I slept most of the time, so I didn't need the journal and pens, I didn't need the coloring book, I didn't need the books that I brought, my tablet, headphones, anything like that. But that is not to say that you won't need those things. I highly recommend having a pair of headphones with you just in case. If you do have somebody else in your hospital room, you don't want to disturb them. And if you do react better than I did to the anesthetic, then you will be aware and you will have some time to kill. I brought like a whole skincare thing with like makeup in it. It feels so dumb to even say that, but I did because I thought that I would be filming and I couldn't even lift my arms. <laughs> so I didn't need that. I didn't need the dry shampoo that I brought. I didn't need the pajamas that I brought. I brought like three changes of clothes. That once again is because I just wasn't sure how long I was going to be in the hospital for. And luckily it only ended up being the one night. So then I got to go home and be as comfortable as I could be after having abdominal surgery. So yeah, like I said, the first half of that list is things that I do highly recommend having. The last half is stuff that I was just stupid and thought that I was going to need. A really good idea I found was looking on the weight loss surgery support group that I am in on Facebook. And I just looked to see what other people had packed, what they ended up needing and didn't need. So yeah, that was what I brought with me on the day of my surgery. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see more of my face and more of my surgery journey, you can go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I do post a lot more there than I will on YouTube. Everything will be linked in the description down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.